Welcome to the stream, everybody. This is another RTS League Division 1 group match, Season 22, of Age of Mythology, The Titans. I think the description for the video says it's the extended edition, but it's not. This is the original game. And we have GDM against DOD B Team. DOD B Team have played two already and lost them both, so this is really crunch time for them. And GDM have a win and a loss so far. So it should be quite interesting. At the bottom we have GDM, uh, so Anti-Valk and Marcus, both playing Kronos. And at the top we have Iron Blitz playing Oranos and Shelty playing Loki. The map is Savannah, which is high hunt and very open map. Um, so very good for just raiding in general. Um, this is GDM's home map. So they get to pick this map and then DoD will pick the next map. We have been warned that there may be some lag from Iron Blitz. There's the red dot there already, red shield. Hopefully it'll be okay. Red choosing not to go for his rhinos for some reason. I'm not sure why. Hunting is a lot faster than chickens. The actual description for chickens is really ambiguous because it says, <laughs> yeah, can we gather from this? I think I have the custom tooltips actually that say it's herd. But um, I think the original tooltips say they're hunted, which is a bit of a misnomer because you don't get the hunting rate with chickens. The hunting rate is much faster. Um, chickens are the same rate as berries and sheep and everything. He has, I don't know if he just didn't see them or maybe he was just waiting for more villagers so he didn't have any problems taking down the rhinos. That's probably the case. I can't imagine he didn't see them. Quite a few sheep here for blue. Good for him. He's got quite a lot of rhinos as well. And Teal has decided to move to his rhinos just as the giraffe ran out. I think he only had one giraffe there. It's a bit strange and annoying. Especially if you don't find your second hunt like straight away. He's using ox cart micro here to make sure the rhino doesn't attack his villagers. It's quite nice. I don't like use of the straggler tree here just because the walking time is a bit ridiculous but I don't know, it depends on the build obviously with Norse you have to build ox carts and that takes town centre time so I don't know, I don't play Norse very often and I'm terrible at Norse it may well be very uh, viable to do that it's a very nice relic here it's basically a free um, husbandry upgrade so very good for farms in particular but it doesn't affect Atlantean, so Shelty is the only one that would benefit from it in this game. And that's if the game goes on very long. Considering we have two Kronos players, uh, we might just see a double crush um, with GDM trying to end the game early. I imagine that's what they're going to do. There's not a huge uh, number of reasons to go Kronos to begin with, um, especially double Kronos, so we'll see. Red has an idle town centre here. Is that? Does he not have any wood? Okay, he's gone for a very fast advance, so he's going to be up by four minutes. And he's probably going to be time shifting this temple very soon. Blue is already doing that. So it looks like they're going to uh, rush the Norse player, which is probably sensible, um, just because he's going to advance later than Oranos, most likely. So he's already up as well, and so is the local player. So he obviously knows he's facing two Kronos players, so you need to advance early in that situation, because you're definitely going to get attacked very quickly. Um, he's also building at home. This house, well, doesn't really protect the tower by itself, but you can see what he's trying to do. No forward building or anything, which is sensible. And who's going to get there first? Blue. Yeah, red will get there in a second. So, waiting for Valor. There we go. That's interesting. Wasn't really expecting him to do that. If you delete your Promethean, then you get two Promethean offspring, which are much faster, but also weaker. I 
guess he's just going to go scouting and trying to find the villagers with that. Usually I would expect him just to attack the buildings and things. So something interesting here is that these scouts, um, these oracles aren't doing anything. And the reason for that is that oracles, the um, default uh, unit starts with them, is to stand ground, which just means they stand there ignoring everything. Um, so when you hero them, you have to manually set them to aggressive or defensive, um, which there are shortcuts for, keyboard shortcuts. So it's a bit of a mistake there. So they've just been sitting around doing nothing for about 20 seconds. Green's come in to help, so it should be quite useful. At the moment, it's not a big deal here, but obviously he's had his temple deconstructed, so that's going to slow him down, producing other units. And he has idle villagers here. It shouldn't really ever happen in this, in this hunting situation, because you can do shift clicking. Um, but obviously that leaves you time to do other things, but then you might lose a villager or two to those aggressive animals. So I suppose it's a bit of a trade-off. Any other relics? That's quite a nice relic actually. 40% villager hit points. That one's not... Well actually for Loki that one's quite good because his like main perk is fast Hersa that produce um, myth units on the fly. If you get Hall of Fanes and that relic then they'll be pretty bloody quick. His temple's been deconstructed again so he's going to have to build that and of course Norse build with their infantry units so if he's fighting, then he can't really build the temple. Not very quickly, anyway. He's making raiding cavalry now. The red's trying to push him off hunt here, which he probably won't do. I mean, they're defending this pretty well. But the Terma aren't really in play yet. So basically, red and blue know that this hunting spot is here. And if Teal loses it, he could be in trouble because there's a few hyena here, but well, maybe he'll go over here. But obviously being pushed off hunt early on is a big, big deal generally. Nice use of shockwave. Basically forces a retreat out of your opponent, unless they heavily outnumber you to begin with. An army of um, mamillos and termas it's pretty much always going to beat an army of pure termas because uh, mamillos get a bonus against terma so the only real thing you can do is run away obviously. but when you're a Wanos, your mamillos are faster anyway so they're just very strong I think they're just slightly not as strong as a top light I think the only difference is like 5 HP or something maybe the pierce armors very strong unit. Just have a quick look at the chat. Yeah, it's a very fast paced game. So basically everyone's had to advance really early. Um, because that was the main strategy for GDM and DOD knew that. So they had to counter it. And that means that everyone's economy is a bit rubbish. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if no one had any eco ops except for um, hunting dogs here. Yeah. yeah. It's just all out military. So basically, if the Kronos players lose this offensive position here, they're pretty much done. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see any second town centers in this game. Hmm. Oh, Alright, yeah. A green used valor over there. See, so at this point, red and blue's armies are <laughs> really, really outnumbered. There's nothing they're going to be able to do. They should definitely just go for the armies and then take out the buildings afterwards. I think GDM is in real trouble here. I don't can't really see what they're going to do. You can see they're just retreating at the moment.
It was quite a good defence by DoD, but I think they didn't really execute it terribly well. They should have gone for the hunting quicker. Um, but I'm not sure if they had line of sight to it, so difficult to say. There's a lot of gold incoming. Um, and also that the Oracle just standing there for 20 seconds doing nothing was a bit pointless. I mean, there's, there's not really any point going for the towers unless you think your opponent's actually going to upgrade their towers. Um, I mean, you would against Egypt because they get free towers, but you wouldn't really crush an Egypt player anyway. It would just be a bit silly. So, Some nice raiding going on here. Probably going to get that villager and then run away. Yeah. It's very nice. Is the problem when you're Atlantean. If you don't have manners near where you're gathering, then your villagers are very vulnerable because they're slow. Teal's being pushed off hunt up here. He's got a nice raiding cavalry army here. With some hearses. So if you take a look at the scores, you can see <clears throat> the Odia are very far ahead. I think most of that's probably militarily, but their economies are almost certainly better as well. Yeah, they're definitely doing better. I don't even know... Okay, Blue does have an economic guild. They have got some economy upgrades now. So basically the the Kronos rush or crush at the beginning is over and we enter into the second phase of the game where the Kronos players basically have to try to raid and get their economy going <coughs> because they spent uh, well they went for the early advances their economy is going to be behind they put all of their energy into the rush and that basically leaves them a bit screwed so it will be quite an ordeal I think Double team on red over here. Blue's army a bit out of position there. Not really doing anything. I think oh, we've got our first, second town centre there. Definitely not surprising that it was the Aranos player that got that second town centre first. So you can see red's already uh, having to start farming, which is always a bad sign. That is the objective of these raids early on anyway. First priority is to push your opponent off of hunt, so they have to use their sheep or farm. And Red does have a new sheep here, a bit strange. Um, and then sort of later on the priority is gold. Everything's about gold once you get out of your starting base. Which I think everyone's starting gold must be gone by now. Uh, just about. Yeah. So you can see like totally unprotected gold here, but DoD is on the front foot, so they know it's not really a problem at the moment. I wonder if they're going to go for the town centre. I'm not sure what happened to Green's army, I think it just died. He's got some unused units here, he's doing some raiding. Termas are, unless you're just like doing hit and run raids, termas are really useless and weak um, without backup. So obviously, like here, they're with Momino, so it's fine. But if they get caught, um, like say they get flanked by some raiding cavalry, then they're pretty much dead because they're not very strong at all. Well, you do get the free medium archers upgrade as an Atium for some inexplicable reason. And that's a forward healing spring. Nice. Very bold. It's basically indicating that they want to finish the game now. Which they probably will, to be honest. Third town centre going up. Four blitz. And Teal's going for one as well. And Blue has one also. But Red is obviously the one in trouble here. So there's three villagers in here, so if they can destroy this manor, they might be able to pick off one or two of them. This is 
five villagers in amongst the meta. Oh, sorry, only three. I thought there were two extra ones. So blue is basically now fighting teal and green on their home ground because of the healing spring. Yeah, I mean, it's nowhere near as good as restoration, but it's, you know, it gives you a few HP per second, I think. 2.5. And obviously, if you attack and then back off, then they just uh, they just get to heal while you don't. So, the only real thing to do is probably just wait and then until you think you have an army big enough to take the healing spring and then push. I don't really have time for that. I don't think. It's a lot of Prometheans. Anything else going on? Oh, we got some raids over here. Just take out that terma and then go for some villages, I guess. That's a pretty nice terma there to have guarding this full gold mine. There's actually quite a lot of gold mines on this map, but I mean, uh, Red only has this one. If this gold mine gets found, then Red will probably just resign instantly. They need to get some reinforcements over here, DOD, because obviously. Um, GDM's reinforcements will come much quicker. I definitely don't want to lose the healing spray. Oh, this could be interesting. They know the villagers are there. Can they kill any of them? Probably. A bit dodgy pathing though. <coughs> There's one down. And two was looking to take this. Blue's forward town centre. When I mean, he can. Yeah, <laughs> they are a bit in danger of losing this healing spring. Just need to get a few more units over here, I think. That's a lot of villagers dead. Mm. Mm, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of units killed there by Teal. Oh. Yep, and they've lost the healing spring. So basically, they didn't keep enough units over here to hold this healing spring, which has now gone against them because Red can use it. Um, but they are going to take this position here, so they'll probably get it back eventually. But on the plus side, they did get to raid on this side, so took out a few of Blue's villagers. And there's another one gone. Retreating to his hometown centre. Did Teal? No, Teal hasn't taken this one yet. But he probably could do. Shortly. So, Blue's army is now back at home. So, they're just going to try and take out this manor to get to those five citizens. And they've already forced them to leave. Now, <laughs> a few of these could definitely die here. They've got nowhere to run, really. Uh, see, it's just. Ran past them. Need better micro, really. I think Teal should probably just wait until he's like heroic or something. I don't know if he can. He probably can. He needs to get these um, Cairo blister somehow with his uh, infantry. Another villager lost her. I don't think. Well, green is probably quite close to heroic actually. Let's just see if he's researching it. No. But he does have four town centres, so. He's got a very good economy going on, I think. Let's just check. Upgrades. 
Yeah, about the same. It's just an all-out war at the moment. No one's really booming too hard. There's a lot of idle villagers here. I don't know what that's about. What are they doing? Oh my god, what is this? That is... what... what the hell? Is that... Oh, it's not extended edition, is it? In the extended edition, there's like some really bad pathing issues that aren't in the original game. Where like, villagers and dwarves just get stuck in gold mines and stuff. But that... I don't know what that is. I just got really confused. There's a lot of dwarves as well, I'm not really sure why. Especially as Loki. You probably just needed the food for something else, but it's... In the long term, it's bad for your economy to have dwarves doing anything but gold. Because they're not as good as villagers. And we have our first Heroic Age player. Is that villager going to die? Yes, it is. I don't think they've seen this gold mine yet. If they do... Oh, if he... oh it's so close. It's... Oh, Jesus. Because I got a lot there. That would have been massive. Yeah, I wonder how far ahead Teal would be if he didn't have all of those idle villagers for ages. Especially the ones on food. I guess he's just going to send them to wood until he has enough food for more farms, maybe? See, he's built inside his farm space here, but he was the victim of a double crush, so can't really blame him for that. You want to try and build as close to home as possible to have uh, your town centre defend everything. Let's see what happens with this flaming weapons. It's not the biggest army ever, but you should be able to take out the town centre quite easily. And that's what he's going for. So he'll probably use the trolls to just take out random military units or villagers, and then the rest are on the town centre. And he is going to steal this forward one as well. Green's taken back this healing screen. I don't think they found this. Well, if they did find it, it's not done anything. Hesperides tree. Where is that? Did he cast it home? Okay. Green's probably just going to go for a fight as soon as possible. Right? <laughs> Since he's used that defensively, if he built it here, then. Like, he could actually push forward with some dryads, but he hasn't bothered with that. And Blue has lost his town centre. He did use um, Traitor on his battle ball, though, which is awesome, because battle wars are awesome. Does he have any army left? Okay, so I think, well, I think this game was over ages ago, but they fought quite valiantly. I, I do not think Blue can do anything now. And Red is in trouble as well. Just in terms of the economy, I mean, he's getting in some raids here, which is good, but just DoD is just so far ahead in terms of economy, it's ridiculous. They could use some more income upgrades, but... I mean, they each have four town centres now. Well, actually, Teal only has three. But <clears throat> he has another one if he wants to take it. Why... Why is Blue not resigning? His entire city is gone. He's lost all of his farms, which are really expensive as I have to. 200 wood. I don't know what he expects to do with his sort of secondary base. These dryads are extremely good myth units. I think they're the only myth unit in the game that doesn't cost favour, um, which makes them a lot easier to spam, because favour generation is like the most restricted, except maybe for Greek. Um, 
And yeah, they're just generally good, good units. The fact that you can have five of them and they don't take any population spaces as well. It's pretty ridiculous. And finally blue resigns and red gets the Tartarian gate. First game goes to DoD. So they could be on the verge of their first victory in this RTS league season.